Hey guys, in today's book to screen, I'm going to be talking about Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters, starring Logan Learman, Alexandra Dottorio, Brandon T. Jackson, and Jake Abel. Sea of Monsters is the second book and second movie in the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series by Rick Riordan. After the tree that is protecting the borders of Camp Half-Blood is poisoned, Percy, Annabeth, and Grover set out on a quest to find the Golden Fleece. The Golden Fleece is said to heal or bring back things from the dead. On top of that, Percy finds out that he has a half-brother who's a cyclops, and Luke is determined to resurrect the ancient titan, Kronos. So that was a summary of what the movie is about. Before I get going, I am going to warn you that this review is going to contain possible spoilers for both the book and the movie. So if you do not want to be spoiled, then I suggest you don't continue to watch this video. Overall, I really enjoyed this second movie. And to be honest, I really enjoyed the first movie. I know a lot of people really dislike these Percy Jackson movies, but I really find them just really light-hearted, fun, entertaining amusement. And I don't take them seriously whatsoever. Now, of course, there are things about the movie that is different from the book, but you're going to always get that in any adaptation from book to screen. There's some events that are either left out, or there's events that are kind of just uh, pushed around in different places over the course of the movie. Like, something that takes place at the end might take place earlier on in the book. And there's even something at the end of the movie that I don't think even happens until book three, if I'm recalling correctly. I've only read Sea of Monsters once, and that was maybe a good year ago, maybe more than that, so I can't quite remember every single detail. But from what was going on in the movie, I recognized a lot of it. I'm going to move on to the effects in the movie, which some were good and some were bad. To start off with, the good effects. I thought the effects of the border surrounding Camp Half-Blood were really good. I thought uh, Chiron's uh, horse rear end was really good. The hippocampus was really adorable and it looked so good on screen. I always had trouble imagining what that creature looks like in the book, so it was great to see that creature come alive in the movie. And that was probably one of the best effects. And I also thought Tyson's eye effect was really, really good. That could have turned out to be really cheesy, but it looked really great and it wasn't distracting whatsoever. On to the bad effects. I really thought the mechanical bull was terrible, I thought Kronos was terrible, and for whatever reason, I, I had the same problem in The Lightning Thief. The effects of Grover's legs were kind of distracting sometimes. I don't know, he, it just it didn't seem like he was walking the way he should have. Um, I know when I was watching behind the scenes stuff for the Chronicles of Narnia, for instance, when James McAvoy was doing Mr. Tumnus, they had him in, you know, green screen pants, but he was also on these funny um, rocking stilts of some sort to kind of give him the, the motion of how that creature should be moving. I don't know if uh, Brandon T. Jackson, if they were doing that with him, the rocking legs, I'd have no idea if they were doing that to him, but if it almost seems like they weren't because I don't feel like Grover was moving properly the way he probably should have. Whereas Chiron, I thought his movements really matched a horse's movements. And considering that Kronos is the big bad of this whole piece, I thought his effects were just kind of silly and cheesy and I don't know. I mean, I guess it was frightening. Frightening for children, maybe, but I wasn't feeling, oh my god, he's scary. It's funny how some effects in the movie were really excellent, and then other effects were really bad. It, it reminds me a lot of Harry Potter, the Harry Potter series. In the Harry Potter series, you got really great effects, and you got some really bad ones. And Percy Jackson is the exact same way. So, on to the actors now. There were some really great performances in this. Uh, Logan Lerman was great as Percy again. I... I don't think he did so good on the the monologues when he was talking to himself or either talking to uh, Poseidon. Those kind of felt a little bit awkward. I don't think his acting was top-notch there, but I think other scenes he was really, really great and he brought like great emotion to Percy. Alexandra Dodgerio, I hope I'm pronouncing that girl's name correctly. I don't know what to say about her. I really loved her in the first movie, but I felt like she wasn't given any sort of proper screen time in this one. I didn't feel like we got to know Annabeth that great, and I kind of just felt like she was just, just 
monotonous in this one, if that makes any sense. And that kind of leads me to Clarice, who I felt they were actually giving the most screen time to compared to Annabeth, and I was happily surprised, pleasantly surprised, that Levin Rambin did such a fantastic job with Clarice. I think she was one of the big highlights out of this movie. And I was surprised how much more screen time she got compared to Annabeth. Don't know what I can say about Brandon T. Jackson. He wasn't really in the movie that much. He was great. I, his comedic timing was excellent, and I really believe his friendship with Percy. Unlike the book, I believe in the book Grover is pretty much present throughout the entire book, but in this he gets kidnapped pretty early in the movie, so he's not present that much, really. So that was one big difference from book to screen was the presence of Grover. Jake Abel as Luke. You guys, I love Luke in the books. I really do. He's one of my favorite characters. Pretty much Luke and Tally are my favorites. And I think Jake Abel is a really great choice as Luke. I think it's his writing that kind of come, comes across as terrible. His The writing of Luke is oftentimes kind of cheesy and forced in my opinion. It's like Luke is spouting out like evil villainy 101 half the time. There's this part where he says, join me to Percy, and I, I think I giggled. So yeah, I don't think Jake Abel is a bad casting choice. I think it's just the writing. I, I don't think they know how to write for him. In the books, I don't think Luke ever felt that silly. Probably the biggest highlight out of this whole movie is the adult cast, which I most enjoyed. I really loved Anthony Stewart Head as Chiron, and to be honest, I preferred his interpretation of the character over Pierce Brosnan's interpretation. Overall, I just didn't like Pierce Brosnan's look. His look was kind of weird to me in the first one. I really loved his look in this one, Anthony Stewart Head's look. I liked his more, um, I guess, classical, uh, intelligent professor look, I guess you can call it. And I loved his little waistcoat. That was adorable. Stanley Tucci as Mr. D was excellent. How can you hate Stanley Tucci? I don't think I've ever disliked Stanley Tucci in a movie. Bones, because he upset me so much in that, because he was an evil bastard. But in this, I really, really loved him, as always. I think he brought out that great humor out of Mr. D. And I love how they kept in how he's constantly messing up people's names. That was always a really hilarious part in the book, so I'm glad they kept that. And Nathan Fillion as Hermes. That was a great casting pick. I loved him in this. And this is a radical difference from the books. In the books, Hermes is like this relay runner looking guy. He has like on his, uh, his track suit and his jogging shorts and his tennis shoes. And in this, Hermes is like this guy who runs the UPS store, and I thought that was such a brilliant and hilarious thing to do. I found myself really wanting more Hermes. I love Hermes in the books. I love that, that, that contrasting father-son relationship between him and Luke. Oh, and I almost forgot about Tyson, played by Douglas Smith. He was a great addition to the young cast. I thought he did a fantastic job as Tyson. In the books, I always really felt for Tyson, and I felt for him just as much in the movie. He was just the sweetest little thing. I absolutely adore Tyson. So I guess that's it for my review of the Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters movie. Like I said, I really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed it just as much as I did the first one. Yes, there are, there are differences, and I, I am the type of person who, when I read a book first before seeing a movie, I try not to judge the movie. I try to give a movie a chance, and I always try to keep book to movie separate, because they are separate. They are two different mediums. And you know what? Annabeth being a brunette back in movie one never bothered me. I really don't know why people were so shallow about her being a brunette. What does her being blonde in this movie do to the plot? Someone tell me. What does her being blonde have to do with anything? Nothing. I guess the one thing that I was disappointed about with this movie before I conclude was the lack of Percy and Annabeth uh, romantic inklings, like the start of that romance. Um, I think there was much more of that back in movie one, I think. I've not watched the movie in a long time, but I remember much more of a, a closer flirtation between them, and in this I felt like there wasn't that great flirtation between them. But yeah, I liked the movie. I thought the acting was pretty great. Like I said, there was a few cheesy things. Uh, Percy, his, his monologues were a little cheesy. Jake's Villainy 101 was a little cheesy. But yeah, I, I love this movie. It's just a great family flick. And 
If you liked the other one, if you like the books, then I suggest you see it. It's not bad whatsoever, and I've seen so many horrible reviews for this movie along with the first one, and I don't, I don't get the horrible reviews. I don't. I've read the books too. I, I, I see the differences. The differences aren't bothering me. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!